if you subscribe that's a very good thing it helps me out does nothing for you but it does promote the channel and it makes uh, YouTube notice me so subscribe if you could subscribe that'd be great I have a hard time saying that word subscribe if you want me to hear me say subscribe 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 or you can like if you like you might as well subscribe so like or subscribe subscribe or, subscribe or like you know either one is fine just do it like subscribe do it now Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. have to look at Mo Brooks. Let me turn off this TV. Am I crazy? We have to look at Mo Brooks. Um, you know, he's up there. Let's go kick some ass. Let's get it done. Let's march down to the Capitol and murder everybody we see. I don't know if it was exactly what he said, but it was something like that. That's what they heard. Anyway, so Mo Brooks. This is a good time to do this video. It's time to look at Mo Brooks and see what uh, we can learn about him. I've got a little bit here that I wikied, of course, and uh, it starts out Pretty straightforward. So, 1954, Morris Jackson Brooks, Jr. is born April 29th. He's a Taurus in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, who is he? He is the U.S. Representative for Alabama's 5th Congressional District since 2011. He's Republican, and his district is across the northern 5th of the state. He's a member of the Freedom Caucus. 1963, he's nine years old. Uh, the family moves to Huntsville, Alabama, and his mother taught economics and government for over 20 years at Lee High School while he attended Grissom High School. His father was an electrical engineer before retiring from Redstone Arsenal's Meteorology Center. That's a hard word to say. In 1972, Brooks graduated from Grissom High School. He graduated from Duke University later, and, and then with, but in three years with a double major in political science and economics, with highest honors in economics. 1978, Brooks receives his JD degree from the University of Alabama School of Law. And Brooks started his legal career with the Tuscaloosa County District Attorney's Office. In uh, 1980, he returned to Huntsville as a law clerk for a circuit court judge. And during every year, except when he was either serving as a prosecutor or a judicial clerk, uh, Brooks was a practicing lawyer. I almost said a judicial uh, <laughs> crook. <laughs> but um, whenever he wasn't doing uh, serving as a prosecutor or a clerk, he was a practicing lawyer. 1982, Brooks was elected to the Alabama House of representatives in 1983 he was re-elected and then also in 1986 and 1990 he was the republican house caucus chairman three times in 1991 he was appointed the madison county district attorney and in 1993 he became counsel to a business law firm and became a partner specializing in commercial litigation now in 1996 to 2002 he was special assistant attorney general for the u.s attorney general okay and then uh, let's see here now, in 2014, he voted for the USA Freedom Act, which would rein in the dragnet collection of data by the National Security Agency, that's NSA, and other governmental agencies, increase transparency of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, that's FISC, and provide uh, businesses the ability to release information regarding FISA requests and create independent constitutional advocate to uh, argue cases before the FISC. Huh. He's a go-getter. He's a Taurus. Uh, 2017, Brooks was practicing for the annual charity congressional baseball game when a gunman opened fire on the team, and he used his belt as a tourniquet to stop bleeding for a staffer who got shot in the calf. Now, Brooks's name appeared on the shooter's assassination list. Uh, less than a week after the shooting, he introduced the Congressional Self-Defense Act. What is that? That allows lawmakers to carry concealed weapons because more guns are always the answer. 2018, Brooks uh, announced support for Jim Jordan, of course he did, amid allegations of ignoring claims of sexual, abu sexual abuse of athletes by a team doctor. So Jim Jordan was accused of ignoring claims of sexual, sexual abuse that occurred while he was a, uh, I think it was a high school um, coach, maybe high college, but while Jordan was serving as a wrestling coach at, oh, here it is, Ohio State University, OSU. Uh, at least eight former wrestlers, eight, okay, eight, eight, said that Jordan had been aware of but did not respond to allegations of sexual misconduct by the team doctor. During the Republican primary, he said he was a Trump supporter. Trump endorsed Brooks, who also opposed Trump's 
first impeachment. So, of course, we're speaking about Brooks there during the Republican Party uh, primary. Brooks said he was a Trump supporter. Trump supporter. Um, 2019, after Attorney General William Barr's summary of the Mueller report was released, Brooks read a passage from Adolf Hitler's autobiography, Mein Kampf, on the House floor, comparing the Democratic Party and the media to the Nazi Party. 2020, after Joe Biden was projected the winner, Brooks defended Trump and made claims of fraud. He argued that the most mail-in voting was un oh my gosh, he argued that most mail-in voting was unconstitutional, and if and that if only lawful votes by eligible American citizens were cast, Donald Trump would have won the Electoral College by a significant mar margin. His assertions that uh, the election was stolen by an extraordinary voter fraud and election theft measures were unsupported by any evidence whatsoever. 2021, Brooks announced his candidacy for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated in 2020. Trump announced his endorsement for the 2020 Senate campaign. Of course he did. Brooks was the first member of Congress to announce his objection to the January 6, 2021 certification of the Electoral College results. In December, he organized a series of White House meetings between Trump and a dozen Republican lawmakers to strategize about how to overturn the election results on January 6th. On that date, he was the first speaker at a pro-Trump rally. In the speech, he harshly criticized, harshly criticized other Republicans in Congress for not aiding him in his efforts to overturn the election and said, Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. And the rally, at the rally rather, Trump gave an hour-long speech claiming that the election had been stolen and urging people to go to the U.S. Capitol. The crowd did so, and shortly thereafter, pro-Trump protesters stormed the Capitol. Later that night, Congress reassembled to certify the Electoral College vote. Brooks raised an objection to Nevada's votes, but it did not succeed because no senator, no senator joined him in objecting at that time. On January 11th, District of Columbia Attorney General Carl Racine said that he was looking at whether to charge Brooks along with Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump Jr. with inciting the violent attack. And on 2021, Representative Eric Swalwell filed a civic lawsuit against Brooks and three others, Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., and Rudy Giuliani, seeking damages for their alleged role in inciting the riot. Brooks tried to claim immunity from the suit by saying that if he'd been, uh, that he had been acting as a federal employee, uh, when he gave this January 6th speech. If so, that would make the U.S. government the defendant, right? Wrong. The Justice Department said it will not defend him because his speech was political, not part of his duties as a member of Congress, obviously. Brooks believes that the National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was set up by FBI partisan hacks and that Flynn's trial was a miscarriage of justice. He supported assigning a special prosecutor to investigate the federal case against Flynn in which Flynn pleaded guilty to making false statements to the FBI. Brooks supports the National Security Agency's power to collect telephone metadata on Americans, saying its potential to thwart terrorist attacks outweighs potential infringements on privacy. That's Mo Brooks. So these are the Tarot de Marseille. And uh, these date from around 1760. These are actually uh, Los Scaravillo cards. These and a, um, a numbered edition a set. So I don't know. Um, I'll show you the little uh, guidebook that comes with them. So, so this is a uh, Tarot de Marseille in the style of 1760. And uh, this, uh, this pack is number 1415 out of uh, 2,999 uh, sets that were made. So I don't know if that'll ever mean anything, but the little guidebook that comes with it is kind of cool. And then it gives you, uh, you know, some kind of a story in here to uh, to tell you about the cards and, and what their background is and, and uh, the original blocks they were made from. So yeah, something interesting to look at. Um, the cards, I love. But the problem with these is that if you don't know your tarot, I mean, you could have a hard time making some divinations. You'll see that uh, the uh, court cards and the uh, major arcana, most of them are kind of, you could figure them out not too without too much trouble, but the rest of them could be kind of cryptic. So, but this is what uh, presumably Tarachi cards for uh, just playing games uh, would look like at that time, the uh, uh, late 18th, 18th century. So that's where we are with these. 
so I think I'm going to look at this a little bit differently for good old Morris. I wonder when was the point that he um, decided to become a, a crooked politician? When was that? How does that happen? So that's that's a too difficult a question, I think, for the cards. So why do we ask? Is, has Mo Brooks always been this um, partisan hack? <laughs> so yeah, has he always had this uh, evil bent to him? My goodness, I can't uh, shuffle these cards. So let's put them in right here. Do a couple of these. Spit them out and get six cards for this guy, Mo Brooks. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like these cards for this guy because he seems to um, uh, call to me that sort of uh, antiquated um, do whatever it takes to win kind of attitude. The signifier card for this guy, Mo Brooks, Morris Brooks. What is the signifier of him? Okay, so this is the Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Wands is lots, lots of uh, actions uh, happening at the same time. Uh, this could either talk about uh, things that are coming against him or what he throws out against the world. So let's see which one we can go by. Uh, Eight of Wands, lots of stuff coming down. It's uh, challenged by the Four of uh, Wands. Okay, so the Four of Wands are small celebrations. So all of these issues that are coming out at the same time, and again, I'm not sure if these are issues that he's proposing or if issues that are coming out against him. I, I asked where, you know, has he been like this always? So lots of issues coming at him and small celebrations. It could be that at some point that he found out that when he um, threw up these issues that he was able to achieve some small celebrations. And it seems that's all you need is a few little small celebrations to get your political ball rolling. Let's see how this works out. Basis of the reading, are secrets being revealed? And of course it is. You know, um, I guess this is going to tell us that uh, what 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 he has been hiding is going to come to come to 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 the front. That's all that it can be. The past of this reading then from Mo Brooks is um, this is the hanged man, but it's it's in reverse. This should come out like this and be the hangman. And if it was like this, this would tell us that he's got to look at things from a different angle and get another perspective, or at least that's how he's coming into this thing. However, since it's upright, you know, I've got to come up with my own um, uh, definition of what it means. I don't really trust my definitions of inverted cards, but I'm going to go with it. So I'm going to say with this hangman inverted, I'm going to say that he has lost uh, his perspective. You can leave it just like that. He's lost his perspective. That's where he's at. So that could mean that he's starting to believe the things he's lying about. And the sky of this reading, then, is the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups is what he needs to hope for. And this queen it look, is looking very doubtful. Can you see it in her face? I mean, she's just very a very doubtful-looking uh, scowl on her face. And uh, she's holding a big uh, cup of passion, but she's also uh, got the uh, sort of truth and justice uh, at her side. So he better hope that the queen is going to show him some compassion. That's what I'd say. The um, likely outcome of this first part of this, then, is going to be justice. Look at that. So justice decided to show up early. And uh, I don't think anything else needs to be said. So we'll finish the reading. But yeah, so uh, throwing up issues uh, worked for him as far as small, small celebrations. But now we're coming to this uh, period where the secrets are coming out. His perspective is uh, skewed. And, um, and he better worry about justice. And I think that has to be Nancy Pelosi. Uh, so the self, um, what am I doing? I want to spread these out first. So the self of Mo Brooks right now, what represents him at this moment? And since I was inclined to take this card from the beginning, I'll pull it out now. So this is the um, valet. Uh, this is the page. <laughs> I'm trying to read the Spanish. He's the page of the French. He, or is it Italian? Anyway, whatever it is, he's the page of swords. Swords, truth, justice, uh, rules. Um, and uh, the page is just a very weak court, court card. So he would only bring a message to the court for consideration. So he's a very weak uh, bearer of what maybe he considers to be the truth, the justice, the rules. Very weak. And then the um, atmosphere that that's in, 
um, is how many is this? Two, four, six, eight, ten of coin. So this is very uh, happy family. This is very fruitful. This is um, everything going your way. So bringing out this little piece of what he thinks is justice is putting him is while he's in the ah okay so he's in the atmosphere he's in the environment of all the, the happy family which is all the secrets that have been revealed and then the uh, hopes and fears for him in this case then is how many is this four eight ten so this is the ten of wands when it says right there ten so the, the ten of wands ten of wands ten of wands let me think about this so ten of wands i'm gonna have to look it up because my mind is just a blank right now wands and the ten uh, burdens. Oh, yeah. Burdens. This is the, oh, yeah. This is trying to push that bundle of wands up the hill. So the Ten of Wands is just a bundle of issues that have to be dealt with. So the hopes and the fears are the fears, I'm going to guess, are all these issues. Look at that. It's sticking with this theme talking about, uh, you know what? These are lies. All these are lies. That's what they are. Okay. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is wow. The uh, um, Imperatrice. So that's the, um, what's the, you have the emperor and you have the empress. Uh, so yeah. So the, oh my gosh, this is Nancy Pelosi, the uh, empress. Wow. He's going to pay the price. Well, that finished up a little differently than I thought it would actually, but it was pretty direct. I mean, I'm glad what I heard. So it started out with the, um, the eight of wands, which I think after re after the whole reading, these are lies. This is our pack of lies. That is him. Okay, and it was uh, challenged by these small celebrations, the four of wands, which are for me always small celebrations along the way. So all those packs of lies uh, got him some uh, value along the way. But what, he, what the issue is now is the base of everything are the secrets that are being revealed. Look at that lobster getting ready to crawl out of the ocean and reveal his deepest, darkest secrets. And then the um, the next thing we showed up with was with the hangman in reverse. I think he doesn't have uh, his, his, his view on what's going on is uh, skewed. Um, the um, sky for that reading was the Queen of Cups. He has to rely on the Queen's compassion. This is Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Pelosi. Uh, that's what he has to rely on. And then, um, but the final outcome of that first part was justice. Of course, it's justice. That's it's always going to be there. Now, the um, self of him uh, turned out to be the uh, Page of Swords. Uh, just a very uh, weak uh, representation of what he calls truth and justice. And it's in the environment of. Ten of Pentacles, which is all the value that the commission is, has, uh, gonna, is going to acquire against him. And then the Ten of uh, Wands comes up as the hopes and the fears. And again, it's just that pack of lies, that big bundle that's so he heavy and cumbersome and hard to push up the hill. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing was the Imperatrice, which is the Empress. And uh, this, again, is Nancy Pelosi. And uh, she's the one who's going to um, finish this story. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.